hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Bravo Music Academy and our ninth ever Teacher Tip Tuesday. I am Miss Christy. I'm the owner here at Bravo Music Academy. I'm also a piano and voice instructor. And I'm very excited to share with you today that our fall recital is five weeks from this Saturday. And because of that, I thought we would do a little series on recital readiness and getting yourself prepared to have the most awesome rockin' recital out there that you could possibly have. So since this is the first week that most of our students are receiving their music, we're going to start right from the very beginning with how to learn your music the first the first week, really, getting to know your music, getting to know what you need to do. So there are two different levels that we're going to talk about today with this. One level is for beginners, the other is for more intermediate and more advanced students. For the beginner level, we're going to start out with some very basic practice steps. So the first practice step that you're going to do is read your notes. So that means that you are going to go through, I have a little book here, of music and you're gonna go through let's see what's a good one to use that's a good one we'll use that one for those of you just joining us please say hello in the comments give a wave uh, give a thumbs up whatever you'd like um, and if you're catching this on the replay please let me know that as well and, and we'll say hello. So what you're gonna do, I have a, a cute little song here called Wishes and Daydreams. And if you are a beginner, the first thing you're gonna do is you are gonna read your note names. So that means you're gonna go through and you're gonna look and you're gonna go, that's E, F, G, G, F, E, E, C. Hey, Steven, how are ya? E, F, G, and you're going to continue on pointing and reading just like that, all the way through to the end of your piece. The next step you're going to do, once you're good and comfortable with that, and you don't have big hesitations and pauses, is you're going to tap and count. So you're going to take your book, and you are going to tap those rhythms right on the book, right on the music. You can do all of this away from your instrument. If you are a pianist, you can do it at the table, kind of like I am. I'm set up at a table here in one of our lesson rooms. I'm not at the piano, and yet I'm still able to do these practice steps. So you would tap it. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and the whole two, three, and you would continue tapping just like that. The next thing you can do within that step is to take the music and tap it with your individual hands so that your feeling the rhythm between the two hands. And, and parents, you are gonna need to help your children with this, definitely reminding them which hand plays when, especially if you are a piano student. All right, practice step number three for our beginners is say and play slowly. So we're combining steps one and two of reading the notes and tapping the rhythms we're putting it over onto your instrument and we're doing all of that very, very slowly. So I would go through and I would play the E on the piano while saying E and counting out loud. That easy. Practice step number four actually goes back to our video from two weeks ago now with uh, Mia and Gianna and you're going to do slow practice. Just play the whole thing straight through. See how you do with it. If you have trouble, what do you do? You know this. You stop, you take it apart, you put it back together again. You work those little sections. I call them little bites for my students where we take one measure and we play one measure plus the one beat after that and then you build on that from there. By that point, you'll be ready for your next lesson and your teacher will tell you where to go from there. Now, that's for beginners. For the more intermediate and advanced students, you're going to you're going to have more complicated pieces. You're not going to be able to sit there and say and play every single note that you're playing because you're playing multiple notes at once and 
let's let's face it, we're talented, but we can't say multiple notes, multiple letters all at once. It just doesn't work that way. So what you're going to do is you're going to focus on really getting to know and get comfortable with those notes and those rhythms. So wherever you need to take it hand separate, take it hand separate. Put it back together in little bites. Remember, those little bites are one measure plus the next note in the next measure. I have a more advanced piece right here. This is actually the teacher duet part to uh, one of our Halloween pieces. It's by Jennifer Eklund. It is a wonderful little piece called Spooktacular. If you are a piano teacher and you're watching this and you're looking for ideas, go for this one. This is a good kind of early, late beginner, early intermediate piece. It's got some position changes. It's, it's a really fun piece. It's a, I mean, you can see the, uh, the tempo marking is spooky swing. So, you know, it's all great. So what you would do here, if you're having trouble with the rhythm, say in measure, what is that? Measure six. We're having trouble getting those syncopated tied eighth notes together with the right hand. So you take it apart and you take it apart as far as you need to, whether it's just hand separate or whether it's hand separate, just the rhythm, or maybe you're just working those chords in the right hand. You take it apart, you put it back together. You, you then are going to, I'm trying to find my place here, I'm sorry. You're then going to go back one measure and see if you can get through that whole measure. If you can, you have done your, your due diligence, you've done good work on that, you can move on to the next section. Now, I will get, warn you, this is not going to guarantee that you will be able to play it every single time correctly. You're going to have to go back and work on it again another time. I can, I can promise you that. Um, but using these tips, using these practice steps will definitely help you with that. So let's recap very quickly. We are in week one of recital preparation. So beginners, you are going to use the four practice steps of reading the notes out loud. It's so important that you do that out loud. Read them out loud, tap and count your rhythms. Count that beat. I have my little cheat sheet here. I keep peeking down at it, sorry. Tap and count those rhythms. Number three is say and play slowly. If you have hands together sections anywhere, read it from the bottom up. So that means the lowest left hand note to the highest right hand note. And number four is say and play in slow motion. Um, sorry, just play in slow motion. Make sure you get it all going together. Take it apart, do any of those practice steps you need to over again. For our more intermediate and advanced students, you are going to do little bites, one measure plus one beat. You're also, or one, I'm sorry, one measure plus one note. You are also going to take it apart and work rhythms that are tricky, put it back together. Work chords that are tricky, put that back together. And that's your first week of recital readiness. Uh, if you notice in the title, we said it's for a whiz-bang recital, and I just thought that was kind of a, a fun little phrase that I have never heard. Hello, Miss Joan. How are you? I hope you're well. Thank you so much for hopping on. We are just about to wrap up here, but if uh, you are catching this on the replay, please do say hello. I love going back and seeing your comments and catching up with everyone here. So that's it for me today. I hope you have a musical day, and we will see you right here next Tuesday for the next Teacher Tip Tuesday. Have a great one. Bye.